Hey guys, welcome back. Usually I like to kind of plan my videos ahead of time and put them together, but today, just to warn you, really off the cuff because that's just kind of the schedule I'm dealing with today. So bear with me, some are more common than others, but you would be amazed by the amount of messages that I get, the various ways that people experience chicks dying on them. So I just wanted to put out a few of those things that happen here because a lot of them are preventable. Not at all to say that the people they happen to, that it's their fault necessarily, but I just figured the more experiences we share out there, the more of us can prevent that kind of thing happening to us. It is so bright out here. I need like those football lines under my eyes so that I can talk because the snow is so bright. So bear with me while I squint my way through this. In case you guys haven't noticed, I don't really do the comments thing. I've actually been almost completely off social media recently, which is amazing. But I do talk to people still and I do occasionally stop by and read a few. So I'm sharing the ones I have here, but I'm sure there are lots more out there. Okay, number one, probably the most common way that I hear people lose their chicks in ways that are preventable is when people have the wrong temperature setting in their brooder. So either they have a heat lamp and they have the heat lamp too close or too far away, or they have a radiant heat brooder, which are the ones that I really like to use, but they have the settings wrong. So either the brooder is too high. I, I don't know if it can necessarily be too low because the chicks that I've had seem to be pretty good about just distancing them a little themselves a little bit when the brooder is too low. However, um, it is really important to read those instructions. <laughs> Side note, I can't believe I have to say this, but don't make your decisions based off of a YouTuber. That YouTuber being me. <laughs> you guys, when I got chickens, I read so many chicken forums. I read so many articles and talked to people at the store and also watched a lot of YouTube videos. But please, please don't just watch one of my videos or anybody else's video and just go for it and do it because there are a lot of differing opinions and as always, I encourage you guys to get advice from as many different places as possible. Okay, that being said, um, also reading the manufacturer instructions. So if you're using radiant heat brooder, make sure you're using it correctly. You guys probably already know I'm not a big fan of heat lamps. Uh, I just think there's more room for user error, either having the heat lamp too close or too far in too small of a brooder, but since the heat lamps don't usually give really specific instructions for chicks, I recommend uh, maybe at least talking to somebody who knows what they're talking about, having them show you physically, actively, where to put the heat lamp, or watching some YouTube videos, key letter being S videos, on how to do that. The chicks, especially in those early days, are very sensitive to temperature, which kind of brings me to number two. Not just not having the heat source set correctly, but also not having the environment that they are in appropriate for the heat that you're providing. So for example, multiple times I've had people tell me their chicks died because they thought the radiant heat brooder was enough and they just threw them outside where it was 32 degrees. You can't do that. You have to have kind of an ambient temperature that is appropriate as well as supplemental heating, which kind of takes place of the mother hen. I know you guys are gonna want me to give you that number right here and I'm intentionally not gonna do it today because you need to go out and find some other sources to tell you this information too because I'm learning the more and more that I do this that if I just feed every bit of information people are just going to think that's all there is to know there's so much more to know so there are handy charts out there um, i do link them below i link a lot of resources for you guys below but i want to encourage you to get moving get doing some more research number two is chicks ingesting things that they shouldn't I just wanted to add really quick, of course, mama hens do an amazing job raising chicks outside where they eat all kinds of different things. However, it's important to note that the mama hens do teach the chicks what they can eat and what they can't. Chicks don't necessarily just know it for themselves. Plus, when they're outside, they're in an environment with lots of good grit, lots of different microorganisms and things that they won't be getting in an artificial environment inside. So you can't really apply the same logic across the board. So making sure that you have the appropriate feed. I will link for you some chick feed, um, but also if people don't give their chicks chick grit, it can cause problems in their crop. Having that chick feed, having that chick grit, but also making sure that they are not given things that it's not time for them to be given. For example, you guys know I don't like to introduce bedding until they're about one to two weeks old. Those Grub Terra chicken treats, I've never had somebody tell me they had a problem with them, but I do know that the company, I believe they say don't introduce them until seven weeks and of course just foreign foreign objects foreign bodies i really love those tent brooders but i think someone said that there was like a rogue string in that tent that their chick 
kind of ate and then choked on and died, which is awful. Whatever you're putting your chicks in, make sure that there's nothing moldy, make sure that there's nothing they could choke on. If there's a rogue string, go ahead and cut it off. If that makes you nervous, you can also use like a hard-sided container. The hard-sided containers come with their own safety hazards. Know that there are pros and cons to every single choice that you make for your chicks. As always, I will tell you what I like to use and what is working for us, but ultimately you wanna take in a lot of different opinions and you wanna check everything that you get to make sure as best that you can that it's gonna be safe for your chicks. I know a lot of people like to keep their chicks in those galvanized kind of metal containers. I don't like to do that because I've also heard of chicks dying because it, they get too hot, the heat lamp was too close, there was nowhere for them to escape, there was just the whole thing got too hot, it was too small for them to get away from the heat. So I'm telling you, you have to be so careful with whatever you put them in. You gotta check it. I know everybody is doing their best, but don't think that there is any specific thing that is 100% safe for your chicks. I get as close as I possibly can, but every single method is gonna have different pros and cons. That is where you as their caretaker come in handy because it's up to us to watch them and try and take care of them as best we can. Kind of on that note of drowning, I had another person say what happened is they had paper towels, there was a corner of the paper towel that got in the water and then it kind of soaked the whole thing. I think that person said their chicks drowned from it, which, I'm not saying it didn't happen, I'm just having a hard time visualizing how chicks would drown in damp paper towels. So I'm guessing what probably happened is that the chicks might have gotten hypothermia and died because when they get wet, they get cold, and that is very dangerous for chicks. Ironically, I've actually never had this happen with paper towels, but I have had it happen with regular bedding. So in my experience, the chicks would kind of kick up, you know how they like to scratch around in their container? They would kick up a pile of that bedding and then it would kind of like pile into the water dish and then it would do the same thing with the bedding that happened with the paper towels. It would kind of, um, I forget the word, it just leak out. It pulls the water out of the water container and just makes the whole thing a soaking mess if you're not checking them frequently enough. So that's actually, I've never had it happen with paper towels, but I have had it happen with regular bedding. And um, fortunately for me, it happened when I was around and checking, so I was able to clean it all out, dump it all out, put it all back in, which is why I so, so recommend that nipple drinker water. I linked that for you guys as always, but that way, no matter what kind of bedding you're use, because you're gonna have to use some kind of bedding, right? Whether it's paper towels, uh, whether it's those shavings when they're old enough for them, the nipple drinker will keep the water up high and then they will be able to just drink from it instead of having a pool of water, which any kind of bedding can create big problems with. So I love that nipple drinker, I think it's safer. We have never had it spill personally, but I'm sure it can get knocked over and spill. So if you have that, I, I, this is the kind of thing I'm like, I can't believe I have to say all these details, um, but I do wanna prevent as many chicks dying as possible. But if you do have that nipple drinker, make sure that you follow the instructions, make sure that it's kind of secured someplace so that if they do knock it over, because especially when they're getting older, they get kind of crazy, that it's secured so they don't just lightly jump off of it and have it dump everywhere. But more than anything, because we can try and prevent all these problems as much as possible, right? But the biggest thing is that we're checking on them and we're kind of looking at that system and seeing what works, seeing what doesn't, so that we can keep them healthy, keep them safe, and keep moving forward with our experience leading the way. Okay, what else? Um, this isn't necessarily something that kills chicks, but I have heard people complain about the mess <laughs> that chicks make. More than anything, they're dusty. You know, we thought maybe we were using the wrong bedding at first, why they were so dusty, but uh, I've heard it's a combination of just the bedding, the chick feathers, the chick, the chicks themselves like release dust apparently. I don't, I don't really know how it all works. You know that mesh tent container that we like to use? That one has a lot of great airflow, which is so good for the chicks. Uh, I believe it helps prevent disease. It's good for the chicks. It's nice and healthy for them. In my experience, it's actually no worse of a mess than when I was keeping them in that kind of hard plastic brooder container. Both cases for me, dust everywhere. And that's because you're not like boxing them in. You're not, they need air. <laughs> they need airflow because they're living beings. So I would rather have healthy chicks with more airflow, but know that if you're raising them inside, it's gonna get dusty. That's where, if we can, we keep them in a separate room with like the door closed ideally to prevent it from getting to the rest of the house. Um, that's also why a lot of people raise chicks outside in a barn or in a garage. You know, that's where you run into more temperature control issues. We haven't done that personally. We always raise ours inside, 
but it is that's why by the time that they're ready to go outside you want to kick them outside because they're messy so again in my experience no matter what kind of container it, as long as it's a healthy appropriate container for the chicks I've always had it be messy that's why we like to kind of lay a tarp around the immediate area where the chicks are and also a handheld vacuum is really key I keep a vacuum right in the chick area because uh, they also do make other messes like kicking up shavings and you know every time you put food in and put shavings in it just gets on the floor so i like to keep a handheld vacuum some dusting stuff just right by the chick container so i can kind of keep up with it and it doesn't get too crazy um okay what else what else another one is just not treating very uh treatable illnesses or i'm, I'm not sure condition probably pasty butt being a really common one I was not gonna get chicks this year. I'm, I'm torn. We're getting plenty of eggs, but I always kind of want to demonstrate to you guys the new things that I am learning. So I'm literally thinking about going to the store, just picking up some chicks with pasty butt specifically so I can do a video on how to treat it. Basically, you just soak their little booties in warm water and it comes right off. Um, but just treat it, just do something about it. If your chick is having some leg issues, you know, look up how you can treat those leg issues. Sometimes they fix themselves on their own. Sometimes they don't but you know the biggest thing is just being involved if you see something do something about it I guess finally kind of on that disease note the last thing that I'll say is having too many chicks for the amount of space that you have so same with chickens it's really easy to kind of up that number of chicks more than we necessarily should I know you guys are gonna want a hard and fast number I can't give you one because it depends on the breed it depends on the personality and the size of your chicks so um, I can tell you what I have done that I like. I think in those hard plastic containers, I limit it at like six is too many in that size of a bin that I use. And I only say too many because I ended up, once they got bigger, it was too many. So I ended up adding more bins or adding bigger containers depending on the year, I've done different things. The biggest thing that we like to do is when we have too many chicks, we just put them a lot of time, we give them a lot of time outside. So as always, I link for you guys the playpen we like to use, the playpen cover to keep them safer from air predators. So when we have chicks that are kind of too many for the container or outgrowing their container, we just give them as much outside time as possible. And it's just like human babies, when they get time outside, when we bring them back in, they just kind of like clock out and go to sleep. So that's what we like to do with our chicks. And then when it's time to move outside, it's not a crazy, scary experience for them. They're pretty familiar with the outside already. Okay, give me a second to think here. I'm trying to think of other common ways people have lost their chicks. Hmm. I think that pretty much sums it up, honestly. You know, a lot of them are kind of freak accidents. Oh, another one I'll say is I know people kind of are getting into fermented feed with uh, the feed costs the way they are. We have done the feed fermenting in the past. Uh, the biggest thing is just to make sure you're doing it safely and correctly. Maybe I'll do a video on that if you guys are interested. Um, but if you do it incorrectly or you're keeping it too long, the feed can become moldy and cause crop problems. So uh, sauerkraut being a very common one or just illness for the chicken. So, you know, really chickens can eat a lot of things that are not great for them and, and do okay. But every once in a while, something will get them. So we're all just doing our best in trying to prevent what we can. And that's why I'm making this video because I figure uh, if it saves a couple of people's chicks, even if thousands of people watch it and never ha would have had to worry about it in the first place, maybe it'll help a couple of people. So that's why we're here. I do want to though, just put out a word of encouragement. I think if you care about your animals and if your animals pass away, especially if it's something that was preventable, it is heartbreaking you know we're all learning from experiences but i don't want you to beat yourself up too much if that happens to you i have had chicks die and whatever caused the death um actually i think the only chick i ever had die was um what the the supplier told me was shipping shock which is why i'm i'm kind of mixed on how i feel about the whole shipping thing um nope not gonna get into that here but since then we did pick our chicks up locally and we had better experiences that way. So again, like I said, I don't think we're gonna be getting chicks this year. I am hoping to get into um, like having a broody pen raise chicks for me in the future because as you guys know, they are a lot of work. You know, I did have someone say once, why not just let the broody hen raise them? Um, because you need a broody hen to do that. And a lot of people aren't starting with a broody hen or hens at all. So I'm all for people getting into the chicken, keeping, hobby or business whatever you want to call it and i'm totally supportive of everyone who is new to the space remember 
every single person who is talking to you like they know everything. I hope I'm not talking like I know everything because I don't. I always wanna just say, here are my experiences, here's what works for us, and hopefully it's helpful for you whether you decide to do it or not. But if you do talk to people who act like they know everything and uh, that make you feel demeaned, just don't like, I don't know, don't let it get to you because every single person was a beginner at some point. Uh, some people were very fortunate enough to be raised keeping chickens, which I'm sure those people have lots and lots of experience, but again, don't let it get to you. You can be just as good of a chicken keeper as anyone who has been doing it for many years, maybe even better. Thanks for watching today and we'll see you next time.